and uh, marketing strategies. I'll be sharing the presentation now. Uh, good evening, all. Uh, it's nice to be here today. And uh, nice presentation by our oh, very own by our very own uh, chairman of the National Association of uh, Agro Practitioners of, uh, of Nigeria. Uh, we appreciate him for the wonderful uh, topic he has uh, taken us through. Um, I was told I'll be speaking on um, uh, poultry management and marketing strategies. Uh, is, 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 I, I would have loved to go by the. I would have loved to go by the slide, but um, uh, you will permit me to, uh, to 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 go more practical uh, about the today's um, topic. Yeah, we we'll we'll appreciate that. <laughs> that uh, uh, topic that the uh, theory part. So let's go right into it. Now, um, before we can talk about management, we have to understand what we want to do. We have to understand what it is all about. What is poultry? What is poultry management? So you understand? I believe that um, poultry refers to the rearing, uh, to the keeping, to, uh, for the benefit of man any form of uh, animal that has uh, any animal that has the ability to mankind, I believe uh, poetry. And uh, we have uh, so many aspects of it, so many parts of it, but we'll be focusing on the chicken part of it, the fowl part of it. So, um, in the we have to understand the life cycle of um, poultry for us to be able to understand uh, the level of management at each stage. We have the brooding stage, we have the rearing stage, and we have the uh, productive or the meat stage. The broken stage is usually between zero days to four uh, four weeks. Then anything from four weeks to when they are ready for pro uh, production or uh, ready to go to market, then we, that is the stage of growing. That's why we call them growers as at that stage. So before they can go into laying or as layers or into meat, uh, to meet as a, a finished broiler, as the case may be. So I always tell people that when we talk about management in agriculture generally, the key part of it is all about timing. That is what makes management of uh, agriculture peculiar to others. Um, for instance, now, you might draw a timeline for your activities on other aspects, on other uh, sector of business. I can draw like plan A, plan B, plan C for it. In the case of agriculture, you can't do that. Because if you plant uh, uh, tomato, for instance, and the timeline says that, okay, after a while, it should be, I mean, ripe enough for the market. If you have any reason not to take it to the market at that time, you might as well lose the whole business of that tomato. Because once it's overripe, or it gets spoiling, and you cannot sell spoiled uh, tomato anywhere. The, sa the same thing with um, uh, poultry. When I was into archery, I was the marketing manager of Bena Farms, marketing manager of Terudi Farms, marketing manager of uh, a, a marketing coordinator in Obasanjo Farms. Um, I deal with the old most of the time. And you know, immediately they, they are hatched at that day zero. If you don't find a way to sell them, then they, be, they are no more day old. 
So that is what makes uh, management of poultry as well as as agricultural business time sensitive. You cannot afford to miss any of the timelines. So let, let's go. We, 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 that, that, that's a kind of a preamble to it. Poultry management rules of thumb. Poultry management plans. So poultry management rules of thumb. Can we have that slide? So, thank you. Uh, the acron the acronym flaws as commonly served as a reminder of uh, as a reminder to check feed, light and litter, air, water, then the bio for biosecurity. These things are key into in, in poultry management. If you have too much feed, you will be losing profits. And your your chicks, I mean your, your chickens might be getting overweight. You understand? And thereby affecting their production, especially for those that you are rearing for egg. If you if your light is not enough, it will affect their production level, production rate. Especially with birds that are reared with light. You understand? Litter management, the ammonia level can cause all kinds of diseases can give them uh, all kinds of uh, irritation so it has to be monitored the ventilation is key because once they are in in the house like that and they're having a effect 30 percent or zero and you might start experiencing mortality water very very key because i can assure you that about 80 percent of egg consists of water so you need to also monitor that and the biosecurity that, that is i don't need to uh overemphasize on that it's very very important you will see here not monitor your biosecurity plus actually serves as a detailed approach to best management practices not only during brooding, but throughout uh, the life of the flock. Can we have the last the next slide, please? So, and you can see the summary of uh, how those management, poultry management plans go in. They, they are interwoven. One cannot be left for the other. It's very, very important, the brooding management, the feed management, the litter management, stock density, the placement preparation, which is very, very key. Some people don't know that when they want to, uh, uh, when they are expecting beds, they need to hit the, the, the room they are expected to place those the beds. So you have a situation whereby it is when the beds are there, then you'll not be, you know, running your charcoal and everywhere be filled with uh, carbon and before you know it the birds will start dying i will right from the wood so all those things are very very important the downtime between flocks also very important so that you don't go out of production these are things we need to look at so that we make sure that um at every interval at every stage we plan on our management so that we will not plan to fail we need to know that at this level, this is what I'm supposed to do. At this level, this is what I'm supposed to do. And most importantly, for the farm managers, they have to know how to monitor their uh, workers to make sure that at every that every stage is very important. They actually carry out to the best of their ability. If not 100%, let us have 99.9%. .9%. Next slide, please. So, poultry management plan, Moni monitoring during times of transition, either from the hatchery to the farm, or either from the brooder house to the rear, uh, rearing or grow up in, you understand, it's very important. Keeping an eye on equipment, 
our equipment must be very clean, free of any pathogen or uh, uh, any, any any disease causing organisms. Mortality checks. That is also very very important. So people they will just keep their birds in the pen. They will not bother to isolate or remove sick and dead birds, thereby allowing sickness to thrive and to grow within the pen. It's very, very important. Mortality checks, very, very important. Flock health management, yes. This is also very important because um, I've seen so many people, they, they are not observant. As a farmer, you have to be very, very observant. What is the reaction of your flower birds? How are they feeling? How are they reacting to the environment? For instance, for a, 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 a brood, a, a, a chicks that you are brooding, and they are scattered away from the light, your source of heat. You should know that for them to do that, that means that the heat is too much. You understand? Or you notice the bird somewhere just go and isolate himself and, you know, cuddling around. You should know that bird is sick and you isolate it before it spreads to others. So it's very, very important for you to monitor your flock health management. Communication and teamwork. I've talked about that, how the farm manager needs to put his worker, his workers on to, you understand? I'm not saying you should have pressure of them, but they should be able to uh, synergize whatever they are doing together. They should have a communication, it's something like what we call in the education side talks, communication book. At every point in time, they should be able to know what is happening in each pen very very important and the uh, environmental management well if there is little or nothing we can do on the, about that then in the, on the sunny day we should know that they're taking more water and thereby we should be ready for that to make sure that the ventilation is okay to make sure that the litter management is okay so that they cannot be having accumulation of ammonia and other environmental factors have to be linked to the last slide please hello okay thank you so we go straight into uh poultry marketing so that we don't waste your time um the failure or success of any business for that matter depends on their marketing strategy because you are not doing business until you actually sell what you are producing, until you actually sell your services, until you actually sell uh, your chicks, the old, your eggs, your meat, you are not actually doing anything. So we have seen so many farmers, they start producing and uh, they have problem of selling and that is what uh, run them out of business. So we have to, uh, see this as a very, very important aspect, of course, of poultry management and also of business of uh, poultry. Good marketing strategy should follow this principle. Awakening cravings, that is, you, what you are producing must be what people need, what people crave for. For instance, now, if you are producing egg, you must be able to create that cravings for people. You must be able to let them realize the importance of egg to people, to health of people, to nutrition of people, so that um, you create the craving for them to desire to have that egg. Build consumer trust, very, very important. Very, very important. Um, I know for some farms, especially the likes of CHI, Lights of Obasanjo, Lights of Chukum, the Lights of Said, Lights of um, uh, so many of them that people will queue up and pay years ahead for their deals. I am aware when I was, especially when I was in Archery, that a certain customer paid one year ahead because they trust what we are going to give them. They know what we give them. We are always make their business 
to thrive and for them to have a good profit. So, celebrity endorsement. Well, it's, it's a good budget marketing strategy. Um, for instance, if we have the governor eating, let's say, Shokoju Farms egg, you understand? It's, 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 it's a good uh, marketing strategy also. Product engagement. You have to engage people and let them see, like I said, the merits of, of your product you are offering to them. For instance, uh, when I was doing the interview with um, Ambassador Farms, then, way back then, as a sales coordinator, it was Vicky uh, O'Neill that was the national sales manager then, you know, he was asking me that, how do you sell uh, ice to an Eskimo? You know, naturally Eskimos, they, they stay in a uh, very cold weathered uh, environment and they are used to seeing ice every day. So now, how do you go to him and say, buy ice that you see every day from me? You understand? So it depends on the way you manage and you engage people about branding, <laughs> adding value to your product, so that people will see it as an essential and a very important uh, product for them to pick up. Target niche groups. You have to have your own target market not just target market, target group. For instance, now, it's easier for you to sell egg among growing uh, growing population of uh, the country. Let's say between uh, children between zero to, let's say, 21 that are growing. You can offer it to them that if you eat egg, take you, uh, take you away from the doctors, to make you to grow healthy, you know, and also all those uh, uh, merits that concern that niche of people. You understand that niche of the market. You know, it helps a lot in uh, selling your products. So we should not look at agricultural products as uh, Shabam producing egg meat, Shabam producing meat. Agricultural business has gone beyond that. Has gone beyond that. If banks can say they have products they are selling, and they are packaging it, and people are, are, are buying into it, then we should take it, take agro uh, poultry business as a serious business and see all the products coming from there as a uh, marketable uh, product. For instance, now I'm aware that even the uh, poultry dunks are also, can also be packaged into a form of fertilizer or biogas and or be processed into uh, maggots uh, making a production uh, outfit and that you still sell it to get money. So these are things we, we should always have in mind whenever we are talking about marketing. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Poultry marketing strategies. Trader from farmer at the local market on the farm and the farm gate, the products are sold. That is, we have the farm gate sales. When people come to your farm and say, Oh, we want to buy, then we have the retailer from farm. Here are the products generally sold to supermarkets and restaurants. You know, in the first instance, they just come to the gate, to the farm and say they want to buy. In this case, you have a cooperation or an understanding between uh, yourself and some certain organizations that will in turn resell for you. Leading farmer from farmer, leading farmer from, uh, from, uh, from farmer, the demand for large volumes are assessing by a leading farmer and the products are sold to him. That is like uh, we have the anchor program now. There are some farmers that have huge orders. 
So what they do is that they go to other farms and buy up to make up for their for the fall short of their uh, supply based on their demand. So it's also a strategy. Maybe you have been producing egg, producing meat, and you don't see anybody picking it up. You can make inquiries, do your investigation. Are there farms around that are also doing the same business? You go to them. You might be surprised. They need you to uh, to help them to meet up with their supplies request. Cooperative from farmers. We have farmers stock their major poultry products and sell to packers. Then products are sold to corporate, cooperative. That is, what, what that means is that farms will come together to produce a particular, uh, a particular products from the farm. Then they will now in turn look for a kind of a group of uh, buyers who will pick it from them, you understand? So they, 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 they sell in group and they buy from them in group. If we can have this to work in Nigeria, it will be a very good thing because uh, sell will not be a general uh, issue for everybody where you can say, okay, uh, if I don't go about leaving my job to go and be sourcing for where I will sell, I'm sure that um, others will do it for me and we sell together. It's also a good one. Uh, a good one. Sign up with farmers. The buyer of the market assures the farmer. It's also that is also used in the uh, alcohol program, whereby the, uh, the, the, the 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 for instance in the right case, the millers assure the farmers that don't worry, produce it for me. I will pick it up. In fact, the arrangement goes as far as the millers having been the one having the one to pay directly to the account of uh, the farm where the farmer borrowed the money to produce farm. So we have a kind of recycled uh, production and marketing uh, um, um, system whereby the farmer is assured of uh, selling whatever he produced. <coughs> Next slide, please. So, marketing process. What are the steps that you may need to go with? Research and analysis, very, very important. One key, uh, one key advantage that I have in those days when I was working with all, uh, all these uh, farms and hatcheries is that I always carry out price intelligence, market research. It's very, very important because the uh, the markup of agricultural products is just around the, maybe five naira here, 10 naira there. So it's on the turnover that we actually get our money from. So if you, if you make any mistake on your pricing, either just ordinary one naira or two naira here and there, you might uh, lose that edge that you needed. So, and after your research and analysis, analysis, step two is you have to make your decision. What do you want to do? What do you want? What's your objective? There are some that they just they, they sell aesthetic uh, uh, poachers like um, all these uh, uh, fine beds, all these ones they keep at home or used for games. Is it that is that what you want to uh, place your product to be so that you can command price and sell little quantity? You have to take make a decision on your marketing strategy or what you want to do. Then you go to your implementation of your decision. This, these are very, very key and important. Next slide, please. Profitable marketing plan. Now, I want us to focus on this because it's very, very important. Bypass the middlemen. Uh, some uh, 
uh, that, that, that should be 2001, almost 20 years ago, we carried out a research at uh, Lagos State Polytechnic, where uh, I finished from. We produce maize by ourselves. So we did the farm gate sales, we did the processing sales, we did the fat, we go as far as uh, going into Moolwe in those days to sell some roasted corn, boiled corn, and uh, we have a situation whereby we also invite the middlemen to come and feed them. Then we realized that the difference between the farm gate price, that the middlemen would pick those uh, goods, compared to the consumer price that the uh, people that actually need the goods pay, it's almost 100%. That is, you buy it from us for five naira, then in turn sell it for 10 naira. So we are realized that um, the, 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 the middle man is all a, a, a keep a business on its own that is making sure that the farmers remain very poor, that the farmers don't have profit on their uh, products. <laughs> so to, for you to make sure that you have a marketing plan that works, bypass the middleman. To get your business and customer online. In the days so, uh, that we have now, that we are now, if marriage can be conducted online, well, why can't we sell our products online? In fact, uh, people need food first, survival first. So we should also make sure that um, we intensify our uh, businesses and uh, customer sourcing online. Number three, become a supplier to restaurants and hotels. Of course, uh, like I said, that's the only way you can bypass all the middlemen by making sure you sell to those that we need it directly. It's very, very important. And uh, an example has been cited that the restaurants and hotels. Employ a number of marketers, whether on commission, or, or full supplement. When I was uh, uh, into marketing of deals, uh, that's that's how I made my money. You know, I go to farms around, I pick it up, I mark it up with that with twenty between twenty and fifty naira. Imagine a, in a particular day, I sell like a thousand or ten thousand. And I mark it up with two with 20 naira. I mean, I'm smiling home with 200,000 naira. So, when you have such, you can encourage marketers to come around and start fast. The distributors we, are, we have today grew from that. But unfortunately, they are now growing to become another middleman. You understand? So, we have to be very careful to know how to draw the line between a marketer and a distributor so that at the end of the day, we will not still go and uh, shortchange ourselves. Number five, other act offer attractive packages and home delivery services. Um, I noticed something of recent that fruits sold at uh, Victoria Land Lagos Island, all these eyebrow places are more nutritious, more packaged, more, you know, enticing to buy than those that are being sold in Nikorodu here. So I now ask myself, if the farm is in Nikorodu and we have a situation whereby the best of the fruits have been sold at VI, what happened to Nikorodu here? It's very simple because People in VI are offering attractive packages and delivery service. And come to think of it, the price difference is not even much. So we should also key into that, that whatever is coming from our farms are made to look attractive, are packaged very well. In our uh, Association of Agro Practitioners of Nigeria, we have people Every day they make flyers, 
they are butchers, they are killing lamb, they are killing cow, they are selling meat and are packaging it very well. And people are patronizing them. They are doing online sales. So these are things we must also put in mind and make sure that uh, we get it right. Next slide, please. So, uh, having said all this, I believe that um, we, we, we have picked one or two things from what uh, we uh, discussed with you today. And I know that um, if you put all these things into action, uh, definitely uh, we will have a better marketing uh, uh, and profitable venture in our various farms and our poultry business will be growing and better for it. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Tolu Alokwe Shokweju. Uh, 